Hey guys, here's another step for the movie poster series. Now that we are done with our characters, with the exception of one person who has not been photographed yet, we can add some zombies. In Freezer Burn, zombies are generally the main enemy of the movie, and what I want to do is create a whole horde, a whole army of zombies right behind these guys. Since creating crowds or large numbers of people from scratch is a wonderful pain in the butt, I'm going to show you a few techniques to do it very easily and in just a few steps. I'm also going to show you how to access custom brushes, which is also easy. So I googled zombie photoshop brushes and I got this one. It's under lordofdesign.com slash zombie dash photoshop dash brushes dash pack. Um, it's a big zombie brush pack that you can download and put into Photoshop and you get about 30 different brushes of different zombies, both full bodies and heads and different effects. It's really, really cool. It makes your life a lot easier. All you have to do is click on one of these links here, download it, and then click on the zombie pack to open it up. And then just do a quick search for zombie if your computer doesn't find it for you. Find your zombie brushes and simply double click them and they will be added automatically to your brush templates. And you should see your brushes here, but I don't right now, so that means I have to restart Photoshop. So give me a minute while I do that. All right, now that I've reopened it, I'm gonna open up my freezer burn picture. <clears throat> Check my brushes. And there are all my zombies. So we'll go ahead and grab one of our zombie elements. And we're going to open up a new layer. We're going to call it zombie layer. And we're going to move it into our effects folder. I move the effects folder below Robbie, Corey, and Zero because I want the zombies to show up behind them. But I also want them to show up in front of the shadows, the city, and the background so there's no issues. As you can see, the zombies are right there. Now, with the brush tool, make sure your zombie layer is selected. And we're just going to put one in real quick just so you can see what it looks like. And there is a zombie. He's looking pretty good. Now, what we want to do is add multiple versions of different zombies in large numbers without having to do too much work. And I'm going to show you how to do that. On the side of Photoshop, there's this little option right here that's brush presets. Click that, you get a little sub menu. There are a series of tabs. The middle tab says brush. And you have access to the different brushes. Now, we're gonna choose our main zombie right here. And we have a bunch of options here that help us with customizing our zombie paint brushing effects. Shape Dynamics makes it so the zombies, whenever I paint them on, don't exactly show up in the same way, as you can see. If that were off, they'd all look the same. We don't want that. So we're going to turn on Shape Dynamics, change the jitter as much as possible so they all have different sizes and shapes. Diameter will change how many zombies will show up at once the more you paint. And now we want to turn on Scattering. Scattering makes it so as you paint, they don't show up in a perfect line, they show up in different areas, which is a good thing. So you can change the scatter percentage, which will make them show up in different areas. This may be a good or not so good thing, depending. For my picture, I don't want to do it too much because there is a certain level of three-dimensional depth to my poster. And then the effects below scattering give different effects that aren't really necessary for what we're doing. Let's also turn on both axes under scatter and under Shape Dynamics, make sure Flip X Jitter is on as well. That way the zombies show up in different ways. So, we're going to start way out at near the end of the horizon back here. And we're going to take our brush and make it really tiny. And just start painting in zombies. That's pretty good. Raise the brush size by two pixels. Two pixels again. And you get the idea. Now, we want to change our brush to a different kind of zombie. We'll choose this guy right here. 
That's generally what he looks like. But we want to make it nice and small. And then start again from the back. Now crowd control is up to you. You can either make it look ridiculously crowded and make it look really hopeless for them. Or you can keep it relatively unscattered. So bear with me while I fill all this in for you. So that'll do. I'm going to refine it a lot more on my own, which you should do as well. But generally the idea is that we want to see hordes or armies of zombies coming out from the city area heading toward them. Now what we want to do is grab an image of a large bunch of crowds. I found this big crowd of, of the uh, original U2 Vertigo tour. Had lots and lots of people, which I thought was good. Generally the best idea is to find crowds that show people's faces looking toward you, which you can find on your own, but the image is so small in the background it won't really matter. So I'm going to use the crop tool, and I'm going to grab this part of the crowd right here, and that's it. Press enter and then move this crowd over to the freezer burn poster. Just put it right over top of them, no big deal. Duplicate it many, many times. At least, let's say, five times. And layer them over the zombies. It doesn't really matter how they're layered, as long as they're layered. Now, take these crowds, select them all, then go to Layer, Merge Layers. That way you make it one layer. Now, we're going back to our zombie one. Go ahead and make the crowd layer invisible. Grab the magic wand tool and click outside the zombies. This will select just the zombies. If you want to get really meticulous, get in there. And with the magic wand tool, press and hold shift to fill in the gaps. And that'll do. Now, right click, click on select inverse, and then go down to our layers panel and click new layer mask. This will mask your zombies. Now, turn back on our zombie layer, control click on the zombie mask, and then once again, click new layer mask. This makes it so the zombies look like they have real color and saturation. They're a little too colorful though. I want to change that a little bit. So we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And I'm going to choose one of the presets that Photoshop sets up for me. And I'm going to choose Yellow Boost. That makes them kind of fit in a little bit more. Then take your crowd layer and change the blend mode to hard light. That way they have a little bit of color, but they still definitely have a sense of dread and nastiness and it just doesn't look very good. Now there's one one last thing we want to do. We want to add a little bit more depth to them, so we're going to add a shadow. Go to FX, drop shadow, press OK, right click on the drop shadow, select create layer, Click on Zombie Drop Shadow and Command T to transform it. Then right click and select Distort. And just move this down a little and over a little. And then move it back up so it matches with the zombies as best as possible. And then drop the opacity to 50%. And that gives them some depth. And now they really look like they're there. So that's looking pretty good. So in the next video, I'm going to show you a really cool but very basic technique that really adds a gritty poster effect that we're all used to in major action pictures. As you can see, our subjects are a little bit soft on the face, and normally that's okay, but I really want the grittiness and dirtiness of movie posters that we like to see so much really show in this, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video.